Hope you have a great weekend. Here's more on Independent Lens. Today we are focusing on PBS's Emmy Award winning documentary anthology series, Independent Lens, premiering a groundbreaking eight part docuseries, Philly DA, that takes viewers into the office of Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner. He and his team work to shake things up and change the system. Larry is joining us here today. Thank you for being here. I am thrilled to be here. I'm looking forward to talking about this. Oh, you're a former civil rights attorney who sued the Philadelphia Police Department 75 times before becoming the Philadelphia District Attorney. Looking forward to talking more about your career and this docuseries. What do we need to know before we watch this? Well, I think you need to know the series is really not about me. The series is about a, a big group of people uh, who are coming from outside of government and they're coming inside of government to try to make it work for them. They're trying to take back a broken criminal justice system and make that criminal justice system functional. And so it's a, real, it's a story of outsiders winning uh, in what feels like a pretty clubby politics against all odds, but more importantly, it's a story of what happens when they come inside and they have to fundamentally change an institution that has been going a different direction and a very harmful direction for a long time. And then they have to try to work with the institutions that surround them, the media, politics, the judiciary, probation and parole, the prisons. They have to work with these other institutions while the people are absolutely ready for, for change. You know, we were elected with more votes than any DA in Philly in the last 20 years, the institutions are not. Certainly individuals within them are, but they're not. And so that is where the struggle and that's where the drama comes in, in this portrait of so many different people inside the office, so many different people outside who either agree or don't agree with us, people inside who don't agree with us at times, but also people just affected by it. You know, there's an entire episode that is dedicated to following a person who is on probation and parole and is kind of doing everything right, but is up against a bad system. And so probation and parole are, um, are, are an impediment to what is being achieved, right? There's some very, very interesting, rich stuff here. Um, I am happy to report, uh, I show up now and then, but it certainly is not a story of me. It's a story of a movement coming inside of government. Yeah, the city of Philadelphia, as you alluded to, has seen dramatic changes since you took the office as a Philadelphia DA. What are some of those changes that occurred? Well, um, I can tell you we're extremely encouraged that based on some of our policies to try not to incarcerate people for nonviolent, non-serious offenses, we have seen the number of future years of jail and prison cut in half. We have seen the number of future years of uh, probation and parole cut by two thirds in a city where it was enormously excessive and where it was actually harmful. We have seen 18 people exonerated in a city where they basically never exonerated anybody in the past. You know, we've seen protection for immigrants as witnesses, as victims, as defendants to make sure they're treated equally that didn't exist before. We've, we've started a unit that exists for the purpose of protecting workers from crimes that their employers sometimes commit against them crimes their employers because of power have been able to get, get away with in the past. So we really are trying to do a lot. Uh, and yes, we have frustrations every day. We make mistakes every day, but we're trying very hard to be fair. And we think we've made a lot of progress. And what is the exact time frame that this docu-series covers? The time frame, as I understand it, uh, and understand I had no editorial control. It's a very independent effort and I haven't seen every single episode, although I've seen, um, almost all of them. Time frame is essentially the first two years we are in office. So it's 2018 and 2019. Uh, it is before the pandemic, uh, which presents its own separate fascinating story. But that's the time frame of the eight episodes. It feels like things will be forever framed by either during the pandemic, after, before. So it's interesting because you're right, that will provide a whole different light on what is happening within your office. You mentioned the struggle between trying to make changes to institutions that may or may not want to change, or I'm not simplifying it. But how do you how do you tackle that? How do you handle all of these competing different viewpoints? Well, ultimately, you go to the people. I mean, you know, the people are with us. The people want change, and the institutions are pretty used to not having to listen to them. There are times when you have to make them listen. There are other times when you just try to be as diplomatic and, and quiet as you can and persuade people. 
you know, in every institution, there are good people who want to do things right. But I think what is particularly difficult here is sometimes we don't know the dragon we're trying to slay. Sometimes the dragon we're trying to slay is patronage. And what is actually happening here, we think we're trying to shrink probation and parole because it's harmful and it makes us less safe to have people who don't need to be on probation and parole on it, while the ones who need you know, careful supervision have inadequate supervision. We think we're talking about policy. We think we're talking about safety. What we don't realize is we're talking about the power that goes with certain elected officials and certain powerful uh, politicians being able to dole out 300 jobs. And so the conversation they're having is, well, we don't want to cut the number of people on probation and parole because heaven forbid the next thing you do is reduce the number of jobs we can assign, right? I mean, that took us a while to figure out. Uh, you're seeing a similar phenomenon in California. You have correctional officers unions that have the misguided notion that by having fewer people in jail, they're going to lose their jobs. No, they're not. They're just going to have a smaller number of people to guard. They're just going to have a safer work environment. But because they got attached to the misguided notion they're going to lose their jobs, they're raising all kinds of money to run against progressive prosecutors in San Francisco and in Los Angeles. So sometimes it's that. You have to figure out what you're actually up against in order to get somewhere. And sometimes it's just a longstanding culture. You know, judges don't get on the bench right out of law school. They get out of they get on the bench often after having been prosecutors first. And the ones who got there from the DA's office were trained uh, in a different way. The values that were imparted to them are values about maximizing convictions, maximizing years in jail, maximizing supervision. Everything that has caused so much harm is what they did. And sometimes they can reflect on that and they can say, yeah, I guess we were doing the wrong thing, but that's tough if it's what you've been doing your whole career. And sometimes they're just gonna dig in and they're gonna view any effort at change as a reproach of how they have spent careers that they thought were careers in the public interest. And we only have a few moments left, but I'm curious, do you think audiences will leave feeling inspired, frustrated, wanting to get more involved after watching this docuseries? What do you hope this will express and communicate? What I hope is that ordinary people, and I'm an ordinary person, understand that they can go inside government, they can get elected. Don't let the political parties tell you what you cannot do because you can't do it. And what I hope they will also understand is that that means that you can go in government and you can change it. You can go inside government and you can make it work for you because so much of our government right now does not work for us. I think the, the insights here are about criminal justice reform, but they go beyond that. They go, they go to an issue of whether democracy can reinvent itself. And the answer is, oh yes, it can. Philly DA premieres on PBS's Emmy winning series, Independent Lens on Tuesday, April 20th. Larry Krasner, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you here on Park City Television. Thank you. Great to talk to you too.